Oh, hello. Welcome to the 2013 Hundy Challenge. Today we're going to be discussing The Chronicles of Riddick by John Cheese. This was a pretty interesting book. Um, I don't want to say for sure without going back and reviewing all the books I've read so far, but I think this was the first one in this challenge that really took place in New England. Um, a lot of them have been in Old England and the South. And, you know, Death Comes for the Archbishop was in uh, New Mexico. Um, I think this was one of the first to be in the Northeast that I recall. I'm sure I'll, you know, put my foot in my mouth about that. Um, but uh, this book was interesting for a couple reasons. One reason, I could not get a handle the whole book on what the time frame was. I saw that it was written in the 50s, but... And, you know, one of the characters was became kind of a rocket tech. Um, so I feel like maybe it was the 40s. But then there were a lot of old people talking about the Civil War, like they had been there. Um, which, you know, they'd be like in their hundreds, if that was true. Um, I think I was, I was never quite clear what the time frame was. Sometimes it seemed like it was in between the World Wars. And, you know, other times, it, it wasn't like one of these ones where, like, it goes back and forth. It's a family chronicle, but it's all, you know, theoretically in the same time frame, and then they would just tell you where everybody came from. Anyway, that's that's my fault. That's <laughs> that's one of the things that's going to keep happening to me as long as I refuse to read the forewords and the introductions. Whatever. I'll live with it. Um, the other thing that I found was interesting about this was the style of it. Um... There were a couple of chapters that were from the father's perspective. We'll call him the father. You know, he's got a lot of relationships, whatever. Leander. Leander Wapshot. And whenever Leander is writing, um, and it's usually kind of purported as a first-person letter, journal, whatever, um, he has this really bizarre um, and affected style and I think it's described the first time as it comes up. Um, he said, uh, "I'll put all the I'll put all the adjectives and the punctuation at the end, and you can feel free to intersperse it as you see fit." Um, so it would be these really clipped, short uh, sentence fragments, you know, without pronouns, without adjectives. You know, it was it was a very uh, uh, and obviously affected, like, he obviously liked the fact that he wrote like this um, because there were times when he kind of broke down and started saying the me's and the and the R's and all that kind of thing. Um, so that was a really weird style. Um, the other styles were uh, first person, or not, third person, describing his two sons which was Coverly and Moses, um, and they were each supposed to find a, find a wife and have a son, and then they would get their inheritance. And how they come to that is the kind of the story of the book. Um, and Coverly, um, which I think was interesting for the 50s, um, you know, certainly not unique. There have been a couple of homosexual characters in older books that I've read, but um, Coverly decides about halfway through that he's a homosexual. Um, and there's lots of intimations throughout that all three characters are, the father and both of the sons. They all talk about their homosexual youths. And uh, one of them, I can't remember if it was Moses or Coverly, but one of them lost a job because at his psych eval, he admitted to homosexuality. And no one had told him, hey, just tell them you're good on everything. Keep everything under your hat. So he thought he was really supposed to, like, open his heart out and bleed to this psychiatrist. And uh, he lost the job because of that. Um, but Coverly, uh, after his wife leaves him, he decides he's going to be gay. And he wants to be the most flamboyantly gay guy who ever lived... 
And this was all just for like one chapter. And then, then his wife comes back and he's like, oh, I love you again. And Venus, come back to me. He kept, you know, talking about, uh, you know, heterosexual love as, as the Roman god Venus. He's like, oh, Venus is back to me now. I'm like, this is really weird. Um, you know, he made it out like it was a, a choice, which I suppose would have been a very 50s thought process to have. Um, but, uh, you know, I was, I was intrigued that they actually addressed some of those things, which are still considered taboo today, much less so, but which must have been just, you know, outrageous at the time. Um, so it was an interesting little book, short read, um, different kind of pace from the Faulkner and the Southern Gothic kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, aside from the weird clipped styles of the Leander chapters, um, pretty well written. So there you go. John Cheever, Lobshot Chronicles. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next time.